Hi, our study of the theory of curves goes on unabated and uh, this last slide from the previous video is appearing here because I want to emphasize how um, important this existing theorem for geodesics um, can be. For example, we saw uh, the delicate issues with R2 when you equip it with L infinity norm or when you equip it with the L1 norm, we saw different behavior for existence and uniqueness of geodesics in these spaces. And we saw how doing hands-on calculations can be tricky. So in light of this theorem, we don't have to because if you put any norm on the Euclidean space, because it's by Lipschitz equivalent to the um, usual norm, then definitely the set of Lipschitz curves connecting any two points is non-empty. So this condition is satisfied. Any curve that is Lipschitz in the usual Euclidean norm is also Lipschitz in the new norm. And therefore this set is non-empty. And uh, because locally, if we look at a piece of these spaces, they are compact. Uh, we have to rule out that uh, we don't need to go into unbounded parts of our set to uh, find geodesics that can be taken care of. But once you limit to a bounded portion of your space, um, a compact portion of it, then with this theorem, you can prove that uh, there's always geodesics connecting points. So these spaces are geodesics. Another thing uh, about these uh, Euclidean spaces equipped with new norms is that, for example, we can see that R2 equipped with L infinity is never isometric to any Riemannian manifold. That means this, there's no Riemannian manifold whose metric uh, will be the same as the metric you have here. The reason being that for Riemannian manifolds, locally we have uniqueness of geodesics, but with L1 metric, we saw that if you connect two points diagonally, no matter how close or far they are, there's always infinitely many curves that are geodesics. And that was, uh, some observation that I didn't explicitly make back then. So with my regrets from previous video out of way, let's move on to the topic of today, which is the length spaces and Hopf-Reno theorem. The key object will be the intrinsic distance that we have defined before, but we repeat here for completeness. Um, if you start with some metric on a space, then you can build a new metric uh, by defining the length of two points X and Y to be the shortest curve, or not the shortest curve really, but infimum of the length of curves that connect them. As uh, we will see the shortest part is delicate. First of all, this doesn't have to be a finite value. So it doesn't have to be really a metric. And this uh, can be infinity if there are no curves connecting them. For example, if you have disconnected parts of your set or if there are no rectifiable curves. And in, for the second example, we had R1 with this snowflaked metric. All of this were in previous video. And although this space is connected, path connected between X and Y, there is some curve but those curves will never have finite length. So any curve connecting two disjoint points will have length equal to infinity. So these are examples where you don't get a nice metric uh, for dn, d intrinsic. Uh, d intrinsic is always bigger. That follows from the fact that the length of a curve is always bigger than the distance of its endpoints. So infimum will also be bigger than that value. Uh, the reverse may fail, even if you help it with multiplying into 10, 10 million. And one example is, suppose you have this disk uh, minus the radius. So the radius is not part of your set. Now, the shortest curves that you can find from this X on this side of the missing radius to this one 
uh, any curve will have to travel around this ray and connect because it cannot go through the ray. It's not part of my space. And its length will be comparable to how far these points are to the distance, uh, to, the, to the center. And therefore, um, you can have X and Y that are really close in the Euclidean sense. You can get as close to zero as you want, but D intrinsic is at least, uh, not at least, let's say it's comparable to the radius of this circle. So therefore um, you can push this to go to infinity while this D goes to zero and no universal C will make this hold. If you are in a geodesic space, by definition, uh, every for every two points X and Y, there is some curve whose length equals to that, some special curve. And if you put this special curve in this definition, uh, then uh, you see that infimum is less than or equal to that. And we had the opposite one from here. So they become equal. So if you are in a geodesic space, then intrinsic distance equals that, but the converse may fail. We will see an example in next slide. That means we could, uh, we don't have to be geodesic for this to be true. Riemannian manifolds provide an example of spaces where D equals D intrinsic. Um, recall that the distance, this initial distance for a Riemannian manifold was already defined to be the infimum of the length of curves, but uh, there was this, uh, there's this delicate point that here we said, these are piecewise C1 or differentiable curves. So that is the very definition of it. So D itself is defined through the length, but technically if you want to prove this, you have to do some more calculation and uh, to prove that if you take infimum over all rectifiable curves, uh, you don't go down. The, the infimum over all rectifiable curves, once you have this distance, agrees with uh, the original distance. Infimizing over piecewise differentiable curves gives the same quantity as infimizing over all uh, rectifiable curves in this D. Uh, and therefore D equals the intrinsic. So there's some, this can be a nice exercise. But anyway, Riemannian manifolds and geodesic spaces provide examples of spaces where this um, construction agrees with the original distance. And these uh, are important spaces. So they are given the name length space whenever this happens. Again, Riemannian manifolds and geodesic spaces are examples of this. Um, a non-geodesic length space is the plane missing one point. We've seen this before. The reason this is not a geodesic space is that if you are, if you are given two points X and Y that where the straight line between them would go through this missing point, then uh, you don't have that geodesic. You have to make a loop around this point to avoid it. But um, any curve you pick, you can find a shorter curve by making this loop even more efficient. And uh, there isn't an optimal one single curve doing that. In other words, the infimum is not obtained as a minimum. Infimum is not a minimum for this length of curves. So it, it, it is not, so this plane minus point is not geodesic in that sense, but it is length space because the infimum of length of curves connecting them is still equal to the distance of xy as the picture I drew already showed it. Um, another interesting point is that, well, you can, you start with xd, it may or may not be a length space. Uh, let's say you forget the original distance and then you look at x with this intrinsic distance. Can you play this game again and define another uh, metric out of 
curves in this one. The good news is that you don't go anywhere new because you just uh, repeat. That means this game cannot be played repeatedly. And uh, once you do it one time, it, you are already in a length space and the intrinsic agrees with the length distance of that new distance, a bit complicated, but uh, the Wikipedia article uh, with this title has some, some information, not just about this, but uh, other stuff that we are talking about today. The main question we will answer today is when is a length space a geodesic space? We saw that geodesic spaces are length spaces, but how about the reverse? What's wrong with the plane minus the one point uh, that uh, doesn't make it geodesic? To answer this question, we need to recall some definitions. Um, these are pretty standard definitions that you may have seen. A metric space is called complete if every Cauchy sequence of points has a limit. And this is of course redundant, of course, only inside X, but um, well, you can consider Q as a metric space on its own. Every Cauchy sequence has a limit, but sometimes the limit becomes outside Q. So every Cauchy sequence has a limit, but in, the, in a space bigger than the one you are considering. So Q within itself is not complete, but R is complete. A complete metric space intuitively is one that does not have holes in them. If you are, if you are reaching some value with points, if these are accumulating around some point, limit point, that limit point exists. So it's not like a missing point. They don't hit uh, a blank point. Compact metric spaces are complete. Uh, that's famous that every Cauchy sequence in a metric space has a convergent subsequence, uh, but they don't have to be compact. Euclidean spaces R itself is complete, but it's not compact. The other notion we need is that of a proper metric space. This is a metric space where every bounded and closed subset is compact. You may have seen this as a theorem that um, you are compact if and only if you are bounded and closed, but this is only in Rn. And uh, this is just saying in this definition that Rn is proper. A counter example is uh, the closed unit ball in an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. Uh, for example, the set of functions sine and x and from one to infinity, this is uh, a sequence of points in the Hilbert space, say L2, uh, with no convergence subsequence. But uh, the thing is that, well, the way to think about it is that when you say you are in finite Hilbert space and you are in Rn, then there is a sequence of um, unit orthonormal vectors. So E1, E2, E3, and so on, where every single EI has length equal to one and uh, every uh, non-equal EI and EJ have zero dot product. They make angle uh, it's one if I equal J delta function. The, so every pair makes the angle 90 degrees and each one has length one. Now in an infinite dimensional Hilbert space, you basically can make this list up to infinity. So you can keep adding directions. So it's infinite dimensional. So every two here make a, an angle of 90 and each has length root two. I, I just can't resist proving that this space, this uh, sequence of, uh, if you pick an orthonormal sequence, then this will have no convergence subsequence. And I just can't uh, resist giving a cool proof of that. So in the Euclidean 
our intuition from Euclidean space is that if this is 90 degrees, this has length one and one, these two points have distance root two. And this is true in a Hilbert space. The way you prove it is that, um, well, what is this vector if this is zero and this is EI and this is EJ? Um, that diagonal is EI minus EJ. Now I wanna show that this, the length of this is equal to root two. Well, I square it and this by definition is just dot product of EI minus EJ with itself. So norm squared is dot product of vector with itself. And then from linearity of the dot product, this becomes EI times EI plus two times, and also symmetry of dot product, this, n plus EJ, EJ. This one is zero because they are orthonormal. This one is one and this one is one. So the result is that this is equal to, so that's two. Um, now this sequence is then saying that every two here that you pick E2 and E200 have distance two. So they can never come together. Uh, but if, and, and notice that uh, this sequence is contained in the closed unit ball. If the closed unit ball was compact, this would be forced to have a convergent subsequence or in particular have a Cauchy subsequence, but the distances never shrink. So therefore the closed unit ball is not compact, but it's easy to see that, but well, it is bounded uh, within radius one of zero and it's closeness, uh, well, it needs work, but it is also closed. So yeah, in finite dimensional Euclidean spaces, bounded and closed is equivalent to compact, but not in general. But anyway, the notion we need is that of a proper metric space and that of a complete metric space. So why do we need these definitions? So that we can make sense of this um, fundamental deep theorem. Suppose X is a length space, which means distance of every pair is infimum of the length of gammas where gamma connects X to Y. Suppose it is a complete metric space and suppose it's locally compact, which means every point has an open neighborhood whose uh, closure is compact. Okay, it's, it's compact, locally compact. Then if you have two, these three conditions, length space, complete, locally compact, then X is G decimal. Then the infimum, of length of curves is actually the minimum of length of curves. That means there's one particular curve that uh, realizes this infimum. And that means it's the shortest curve between X and Y. And uh, furthermore, X is actually a proper metric space. Again, recall that bounded and closed sets in X then are compact. So if these three assumptions, then these two conclusions. Uh, for proof of this and discussions around this, I refer to some beautiful notes by Professor Urslang. I've used uh, several of his notes and uh, he writes really clearly and beautifully. Uh, the notes he has on his website as PDF and for free, easy to download, uh, is called actually length spaces. It includes this word, maybe some other small words around it too. Again, also look at this and also look at this one from Wikipedia. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna talk about the proof here, but some of you may have seen Hopf-Reno theorem only for manifolds, Germanic manifolds, and not even recognize this as Hopf-Reno here. The reason being that the assumption that your metric space is locally compact and a length space are already satisfied on Riemannian manifolds. Remember that the distance on a Riemannian manifold it actually comes from this infinite. So it's a trivial question whether a Riemannian manifold is a length space. The metric is the length metric already. So this is always true and locally compact part is always true. So two of these assumptions are uh, already there, 
sorry, not this one. It then, so these are always given for Riemannian manifolds. So it only becomes, if you are complete, then you are geodesic. And uh, this means that if your manifold is not a geodesic manifold, it's for uh, some rather artificial um, reason that some point is artificially removed that could be there. Um, this is exactly like the plane minus one point. It is a Riemannian manifold. It is locally compact. It is a length space. But that one curve that would have been the shortest cannot exist because the one point it needs to go through is not there. That's how completeness avoids that problem because there are no holes. And if a curve could be the shortest, um, then it exists. You can fill in. No holes in your space. Um, with this, I want to also talk about non-examples because non-examples are usually more interesting than uh, theorems because theorems usually say something that we expect to be true is true. Um, so already this theorem includes a lot of positive examples, but let's see some negative examples. We will talk about uh, cases where a space is length space, but it is not a geodesic space. Of course, we've mentioned this many times, plane minus one point is one such example. Now let's see why Hopferino does not apply. And I think I just drew a picture which showed why. Because the completeness assumption is not there. So this is not uh, in contradiction with the Hopferino because this space uh, is locally compact, compact because every point has this closed compact neighborhood, um, but not complete, right? There is some squishy sequence which doesn't have a limit. Its limit would have been this missing point, which is now not there. So, so Hopf-Reno just doesn't apply. It says, I, I have no idea what's happening. And they, in fact, this is not geodesic. So it's length space distance equals inf, but it's not equal to min. And now let's give another, a, a different example where the other assumption is not satisfied. Um, this one is actually quite cool. What you do is you have two fixed points and then you look at curves whose length are So there, these are countably many curves glued at the end points and the length of uh, gamma i is one plus one over i. There's nothing special about this. This is just that uh, the length decrease to one. And um, this space x is this union of these gamma i with length metric. Okay, don't, it's important here. This is not sitting inside R2 or Rn for that matter. That means the distance from this point to that will be the uh, length of the shortest curve that connects them. So maybe this length going, the only path that take you from one to the other is you go through here and then go backward. And you add up this length, that becomes this distance. Uh, for my picture, because I needed to uh, fit in countably many here, it looks like these are accumulating, but that is not at all the case in this metric. In this metric, this and this are no closer than this and this, because in both cases you go that way, come back for this distance, for the blue point pairs, you go this way and backward this way for that one. So this is not sitting inside R2. And uh, yeah, it's given the path metric. Now let's see why this space is not uh, geodesic. First of all, if 
if you have this x and y, the distance of x and y, which by uh, definition is infimum of length of curves connecting them, there are many curves connecting x and y, and uh, technically you can go multi along multiple of these and come back, it is still a curve. But if you are trying to minimize, we see that um, you can take in this infimum, for example, uh, particular curves that connect x and y are these gamma i's. And the length of that is uh, one plus one over i, so infimum over i, and this is one. Right? Um, so their distance is one, but there does not exist any one curve with a length of gamma equal to one. And this needs a proof, but basically it's because uh, the most efficient you can be in connecting X to Y is to pick one of these curves and go along that. And then that will give some length strictly bigger than one. It's one plus one over A, I. One over I is pretty small, but it's never zero. So there isn't one fixed curve whose length is equal to one, but infimum of length is equal to one. And this means um, there's no G desic between this X and Y. And this means our space X is not a G desic space. Okay. Um, X is a length space. This because of the way we defined its metrics. So it's kind of um, the way to, by construction. Now we, we have, again, an, an example of a length space, which is not a geodesic space. Why doesn't Hopf Reno uh, object to this? The reason being that this space is uh, complete and this needs to be proven, but it's not locally compact because if we had both of these plus length would have forced geodesic. Why is this space not locally compact? For that, you take any neighborhood of X, okay? So you take some ball, any, any open neighborhood has some ball in it. So you take some ball of, of say radius R. Now you have countably many points like this. What is the mutual distance of any two of them? Not equal to one another. Let's say this is XI and sometime here you have XJ. Their length will be at least comparable to two R because you have to travel to X and then back to the other point. Therefore, there's this lower bound on mutual distances. And this similar to what we did with the Hilbert space example, this sequence of XI has no uh, Cauchy subsequence. Therefore, this uh, ball of XR is not compact. And therefore, um, no neighborhood of X will be uh, compact. Therefore, um, this is a complete list of counter examples. Complete plus locally compact plus geodesic plus length, sorry. Three of these implies geodesic. That's Hopf Reno. Now we saw examples where if one of these fails, we don't have the theorem. Okay, I think that brings me to the end of this video. Um, I have been enjoying the series on curves a lot and I assume you do as well. That's why I have some more cool stuff coming up, especially I will go and revisit the notion of metric derivative. I have some more 
stuff on that coming up soon. And after that, we will talk about some other ways of uh, looking at curves and just even the definition of a curve uh, can be done from a different point of view. Okay, so until those videos, have a great uh, time. And please, please subscribe if you have not done so already. Thanks.